vine and ye are the branches. Which means I'm connected to you. And you're connected to me. We need each other. So whenever a person says, I can make it on my own, I don't need church, I don't need the body of Christ, I'll just stay home and get what I need off the internet, that person is disconnected. And if you're disconnected from the vine, if you're disconnected from Christ, you can't get what you need spiritually. So Paul said, you got to be in Christ. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things Glory. are passed away. Glory. The devil may try to throw your past in your face. But old things are passed away. See, what the devil does, he works harder at our job than some of us do. We get upset and he still be coming full throttle. Trying to bring you past what you did yesterday. The, the bad decision you made. But do you know although Satan remembers, God doesn't? The Bible says he takes our sins and throws them into the sea of forgetfulness. Maybe I used to be a liar. But because he saved me, I don't have to lie anymore. Maybe I used to steal and couldn't keep my hands to myself. But because Jesus Christ saved me... I don't have to steal no more. Maybe I did have a mean spirit. Maybe didn't nobody want to be around me in church because I was a difficult person. But now that I'm in Christ, I shouldn't be so difficult anymore. I can love people. I can be easily entreated. I don't have to be intimidated by God's gift in you. Because whatever gift that God gave you is not for you. It's for the body. God anoints you to bless the body. He doesn't anoint you for yourself. Yeah. Are you all still with me? You want to tell the Lord, thank you. Thank you if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Now let me say this. Just because you're in Christ, and when I say by in Christ, you've confessed and repented of your sins. You've accepted the atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And you are practicing. You're practicing the word of God. That's the person in Christ. Just because you're in Christ, it doesn't mean that some things change. Now let me clarify. Although I'm in Christ, my genetic constitution still stays the same. Yeah. Although I'm in Christ, my biological parents still stay the same. Are you with me? Yeah. Just because I'm in Christ, my eyes still look the same, my physical features still look the same, that doesn't change. Although I'm in Christ, my susceptibility to be temp tempted by sin doesn't go away. I'm saved, but I still get tempted. Right. Is that just me? No. Somebody told me, they said, I, I'm saved, I don't get tempted any anymore. I said, well, what church you going to? You, you need to tell me, I, I need to know what kind of cereal you eat. Because Jesus was tempted for a season. And if the devil tempted Jesus for a season and came back, and Jesus is living in you, he'll leave you for a season, but he's coming back. But even when he comes back, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Now, although certain outward things don't change, there are several things that do change. My mind changes when I'm in Christ. I don't think down upon people. I think big because I have a big God. I have a, a, a mindset of I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I can do the business. I can do all things because I'm in Christ. I can love my spouse and forgive my spouse because I'm in Christ. I can love my child that's acting like baby's kids, not my son. Son, you're you good son. I love you, boy. Good boy. I, you can love your son that's acting like, or daughter acting like baby's kids because you're you can go back to that job that you said you was going to quit 15 times because you are in Christ. Anybody in here in Christ, you ought to give God a praise. The song says, since Jesus came into my life, all the joy that floods my soul, like sea billows roll, since Jesus came into my life. 
don't know about you, but I've been changed. Yeah. Have any of you been changed? Yeah. I've been changed. I don't walk like I used to walk. I don't talk. That's what the old saints were saying. I'm saying it too. I don't live the way I used to live. I'm walking better. Yeah. I'm talking better. I'm acting better. Yeah. I'm living better. Yeah. And I think I even look better by him. The Bible said he'll beautify the meek. Yeah. A person can think they look ugly and get saved in Christ. Yeah. Ooh, do you know Jesus can make an ugly person look? Now, now y'all gonna look at me like. <laughs> See, that person is so sweet. They got such a good attitude. Because they're in Christ. I've been changed because I'm in Christ. And then the next verse Paul said. Not only has he changed me, but he has given unto me the ministry of reconciliation. Say reconciliation. God has given me a ministry. Yeah. Outside of being married, outside of you obeying your parents, your next ministry is the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, to reconcile, that comes from a Greek word, katalasso. And really that word, it means that God does not count your sins against you. Did y'all hear me? Yes. God does not count your sins against you. The next part of that definition, it means that God accepts you. He receives you into his family. Yes. And then the third part of that word, reconciliation, means that God gives you favor. Yes. So God changes you. So that you can reach out to somebody else who's lost, who's in distress, who's troubled, and give them hope. And when God sends people to you or puts you in certain environments, he puts you there so you can reach out to them. In the ministry of reconciliation, we can't count people's sins against them. Now who am I to not forgive somebody? And God forgave me on the Lord now. I ain't gonna never forgive them. <laughs> I'm gonna cut their blessing off. Are you that? Are you that great? Can you stop somebody because you won't forgive them? No. <laughs> Do you know if you go up to someone and ask for forgiveness and they choose not to forgive you, it, the the responsibility is no longer on you. The weight and the burden is on that person because you've gone to that person and you've asked for forgiveness. And sometimes you have to repent to people and you didn't even do wrong. Because the Holy Spirit makes you a peacemaker. God does not count your sins against you. He doesn't want us to count sins against others. I want to let David's memorial know God is going to send people back here. How are you all here? I'm not through yet. God is going to send people back here that may have left in a way where it was sour. That may have left not on good terms. And when they come back, God wants you to engage in the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, he doesn't want you to count their sins against them. Yeah, they may have said something bad. They may have spread some things that were not true. But that person has to come back because they have to get it right. Do you know if you leave your assignment the wrong way, you can go all around the country and serve and say you're doing it in the name of God. But if you leave the assignment where God has placed you, you can go anywhere else, but it won't be blessed. <laughs> until you go back to your assignment and finish it. And then leave when God releases you. Are you all still with me? So God is going to bring some members back here. Because they have to come back here to get it right. And God doesn't want you to count their sins against them. And then the next thing in reconciliation, God wants you to receive them. God accepted you. God received you into his family. God wants you to receive them into the body of Christ, the family of Christ here. Are you all still here? God wants you to receive them. People need love. People are hurting. People might look good. I know we're dressed up in here, but somebody's hurting in here right now. It needs to be love. So God wants you to reach out and accept them. And then the next thing is just as God did count your sins against you, and just as he accepted you into his family, God favored you. 
God wants you to bless that person when they come through the doors and act like nothing ever happened.